Look, I'm going to do a top 10 Premier League defenders of all time. But before I do that, I'm going to do top five first and get that solidified. Then I'm going to do the other 10. And hopefully it makes sense. And I don't embarrass myself. But before I start, for me, the defender role has changed so much in 20 years. It's really difficult for players that were played that were, were 20 years ago to be respected on the same level as the ones now. And I think, res respectfully, there probably is a generation of defenders before Rio Ferdinand and a bunch of defenders after Rio Ferdinand. I will call Rio Ferdinand the catalyst, the kind of moment that it shifted. That's the first ever time I saw a centre-back spoken about who could really play out. I didn't really even understand what that meant. But he can go with defensive midfield. He could be sweeper. He can play out. I didn't get it in real terms, but he was the first one spoken about in that particular way when he was breaking through. And to be fair, this was at West Ham, but it really took hold when he was at Leeds. And it was really clear. He's only there for 18 months, I think. So this list really is slightly, you know, it's my view because I, look, I watch football. I got into football around about 97, 98, showing my age. That's when I started watching football like every week, caring about what's going on. And then I'm still watching it every week now. I'm just busier now, so I don't get to watch every single minute and highlight, but I watch every live game I humanly can possible, including on the go. So when I say the best, unfortunately, it may not always be the person that has done everything yet, but they're on their way. So... I'm actually going to start at number one, just to be clear. <laughs> I, I can't do number one. Let's go backwards. Let's start from 10 to five. If I think about 10 to five, I think the most important thing of a 10 to five is the 10 to five part means that you're slightly missing longevity or success. It's not really about ability at that point. I think everyone in the top 10 is, has the ability level. But I think if you make it there, it's because you were injured a lot. Um, you only had a short, relatively short career. Um, you didn't win as much as you probably should have and deserved to as a result. Um, so it just kind of meant that actually, you know, you're not that, that, that top level. So my number 10, this is going to be so difficult. My 10 is Ledley King. And the reason why I say Ledley King is because I've never heard anybody say that he isn't the best defender that they've played with. I've never heard someone overlook him as one of the best defenders. He is only number 10 because he didn't get to win very much because England and Tottenham, unfortunately, were very unsuccessful. I believe he has a Worthington Cup or something to his name. His, his career was cut short and limited due to the fact that he had so many injuries. But I cannot ignore how good he was. And actually, when I talk about Rio Ferdinand being one of the first ball players, he was just someone you just couldn't get past. And he had terrible knees and he was so, so formidable. I actually did an interview with him about five years ago. Incredible human being, incredibly kind, polite, thoughtful, um, wonderful gentleman. He's my number 10. Number nine, I'm going to go Steve Bruce. And again, he would never probably would survive at the top level right now. Like he couldn't play for Manchester United. He was kind of Maguire before Maguire. And, you know, good, rugged, hardened centre-back. The reason why he's so... It's two things. One, really, is longevity. I think his end of Manchester United was a bit rocky. And it's a shame. He seemed to kind of limp out of the club rather than leave on a high. But I think there's a season he got 23 goals from centre-back. I don't actually even know how he did it. Like, I actually need to go back and watch all 23 goals from that season. A large part of them were headers, and he was absolutely monstrous. I think that's probably why his nose was so broken. But he used to launch himself out for corners. And so Steve Bruce is like, he won things. He played for a very long time. You know, he's a top, top centre-back. Probably couldn't play in this, this era in the same way, but unbelievable stats in terms of, like, how many goals he scored that season. One of a kind almost impossible to replicate. I don't think that would ever be beaten by anyone. I think strikers struggle with that many goals, let alone anybody else. So that's my 10 and my nine. Number eight, I'm going to go Yap Stam. 
And it's sad because I think Yapstam was two and a half years himself, if not three years. He didn't actually play very long. But again, very, very clear that he was an absolute monster at defence. And I remember in those really big games against Arsenal, seeing him and just being wholesale uncomfortable with just how good he was. I think I feel like that a little bit with Van Dijk for his first five years at Liverpool or four years at Liverpool. But Yapstam... You know, it's, I think, again, he loses out because of lack of longevity. But if you talk about who was one of the best, he, he was one of the best. That's my eight. Seven, and again, this person, mainly because longevity. And again, he won some things throughout. This He wasn't at the club that was the best at the time, but from a proper centre-back. It's not undeniable as a proper centre-back. So I'm going to go with Carragher. Carragher as my seven. For me, he just, he played literally from his youth all the way up to retirement. One club man, incredibly driven, hardworking. Look, we've seen the footage of him getting absolutely spun by Henri, but everyone got spun by Henri. Henri spun the best of them. I don't think anybody, you know, managed to not be embarrassed by that. So, I give Carragher that. He obviously won the Champions League, won FA Cup, Carlin Cup. He'd been beating Arsenal with the Owing final. He's just, he's a captain. He just is one of those players that I think, even now, a prime Carragher, everyone would kind of want someone like that in their squad, just to, just to be there. And I think he'll play pretty much in most teams. He'll just play because you need someone like that who's going to be absolutely dedicated. I can't think of someone who really holds that space now. Um, yeah, I, I just I can't I can't foresee it. I can't co- relate co- correlate him to anybody. He kind of stands alone in terms of how amazing he was. Um, so that's my seven six. I'm gonna go Carvalho. Carvalho, again, he wasn't. He was here for a minute until he went to Real Madrid. But Carvalho was just so smooth, and he ha- he was marshalling that defence, alongside Terry, he was marshalling that defence alongside Terry and they conceded 13 goals. He was absolutely brilliant. And again, he made it look so easy. He always seemed to know where he needed to be. Um, His leadership was still good. Came out with a couple of really important goals. He just was, he just was a really good defender. And again, I think if he had joined a little bit earlier, and stayed one or two years longer, I think he will get mentioned more. Um, so he's my number six. Now we're getting to the business end. Look, i I got to be really honest with you. There's going to be someone not in my five, probably two people that are not in my five that you would like to see in my five, and I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> I'm not mentioning this person at all. But my five, I'm going to go with so Campbell. It's hard because if you're an Arsenal fan, he came and he lifted us at a really important time. Invincibles, captain, England, top, top player. Couldn't get round him. Super difficult. Um, Not amazing with his feet, but strong, fast. You know, gave everything. Um, The things that kind of work against him, again, I know this is silly. But I think some people just don't like him as a person. And I think that seems to, I'm not Tottenham fans, obviously, and I don't care about that. But I think people, that works against him. I personally think he seems like such a nice human being. Um, really thoughtful, but also just a very talented centre-back. I just that, Those kind of centre-backs are just a pain that you can't actually get around them. Um, so that's my five. My four is Tony Adams miss somebody but it's gonna have to go Tony Adams is my four Tony Adams is one of those defenders again I think if he had played later he he is John Terry before John Terry and he maybe didn't get to the absolute heights because I think Arsenal were a top six team at the time rather than a number one team throughout um, and also the league used to jump a lot more like Leeds won the league and then they almost got relegated <laughs> the following season. Arsenal won the league and then finished like I think six. So it wasn't like a, the dominance that we have now wasn't really possible. So I think he missed out on just having, you know, that longevity um, at times. And I think that was a massive, massive thing in terms of being able to like present himself. 
um, as the top, top one. So he's my number four. Three is company. Three is company. Three is company. Um, the thing, what I loved about company is that he marshaled the reign of Manchester City at a really important time. And he really made them feel like a big club, even when it was slightly too early. He made them feel like when he spoke, the way he played, he threw everything on the line. That goal against, I think it was Aston Villa or Chelsea, I can't remember, when they he basically was like not looking sure if they were going to win the league. And he scored, it was Aston Villa and he scored very late on. He just came with big, big moments. Like he, he really brought everybody on. And for £6 million, at a time where defenders were going up for like 20, 30, 40 still, it's a real marker of just how good he was. Injuries really blighted him. And I think if he was able to finish his career at the top in his own time, I do maybe two, three more years and, and play in the teams with Manchester City with the success that he had, he probably would be top two. My two is Virgil van Dijk. Virgil van Dijk for me, is unlucky that Rio Ferdinand exists because he means that he's always in the shadow of someone who already did it and did it incredibly well and won more than he ever did. So when I think about really one and two, it's because Rio won more. Rio won, the, Rio won more than anybody else. And so Virgil van Dijk, we get to see him now and see how dominant he was for a long period of time. And just to think... He left Celtic for Southampton for £10 million and Arsene Wenger chose not to sign it because we had Koscielny, Vermaelen and probably someone else that I can't stand now. We missed out on him. He would have been an incredible signing for us. He would have been a generational, lifelong defender for us that we could have anchored himself. Imagine him and Saliba playing now. So I think him and Konate, whenever they are able to play together and they're fit and they're able to get a long run, will really dominate. It's a shame they couldn't do that closer to the time. But... Virgil van Dijk is, is fantastic. He scores, he does last minute, he can defend on his own, big moments, he leads his team. It's hard to argue against. Um, The next one is Rio Ferdinand. He's number one. I can't deny, for me, he made the role what it is in this modern environment. He won, he led, he communicated, you know, the only real blemish on his name is this mysterious, you know, drug um, test that he he missed. It's the only thing that anyone can ever really have to say about him. His end of his career and his last year at QPR, he, you know, he already said his back was out and he probably should have retired, but he didn't get to say goodbye at Manchester United. He probably still felt like he had a fight to go to, to keep going. But Rio Ferdinand was everything. He, he's the one player, even at the peak of Arsenal versus Man United, I just wanted him to join Arsenal. Like he was a London boy. He felt like he was us. Um, so to see him at Manchester United was kind of sad. Um, I would have loved to see him, you know, join them from join um, Arsenal from Leeds. And there's loads of mistakes that I think Arsenal Wenger made, but that is by far the biggest one because he's a generational defender. Now we're going to talk about two players that just didn't make it. And look, <clears throat> I could have easily put this person in Vidic. I don't want to say that he's not incredible. I just think he didn't have the length and he did really well. He came at a really important time. He didn't have the length. I think it was seven seasons he had, but he didn't have the length or the height of impact. And I think Rio is the main person that speaks him up so much. And I think when people talk about Vidic and company, uh, versus uh, uh, Van Dyke, I think they're just being disingenuous. Like, he didn't do enough. He wasn't scoring goals. Um, I don't feel like he could defend it on his own. He wasn't the greatest ball playing centre back. He was good. He will be my eleven. The other person, John Terry, I just refuse to acknowledge him as a human being. I, I think the main reason is absolutely you got success. Absolutely you got success. Absolutely he was the 4.0 of what Maguire and Carragher was. He's a winner. And I love winners. But I think he was never, a, the amount of smelly things that he's done as a human being, I just discount him as, I just don't care. I just don't even care to reference him. Unfortunately, as a black man, you can't tell me that you called someone 
the N word or black effing black cunt or whatever the fudge he said, and just exist. And the fact that he didn't get prosecuted off the back of it, I just don't care about him to even include him. Like it's so hard to look at his achievements without looking at his character. And I know there's some people that would be like, oh, those things don't matter. It's not the same. But yeah, you're supposed to say that because it's easy for you just to exist in, I'm just going to be good at my job, but I'm going to be an arsehole who cheats on his wife, has sex with his best friend's wife, um, has, tw I think it was 12 kiss and tell stories across two years. I don't even know how that's mathematically possible while you are still engaged. Um, the racist incident the selling access to the changing room incident. Like if I list the amount of things that he's done over his career, that just says he's absolutely and affirms him as being a horrible human being. I don't care to put him on any list that I'm in. So for me, real one, Van Dyke 2, company free, clean sweep. Um, and look to everybody else, but it should be being 11 is harsh, but I really love what Lady King as a player, I preferred him. I look at Steve Bruce and Carragher, maybe. I just love how dedicated and how they all, you know, how long they served their clubs into the heights that they went to. So that was incredible. Stam didn't have the length, but he was just a proper defender, much better uh, than Vidic ever was. Um, Adams is untouchable. I think he won three league titles. Company's untouchable. Campbell's untouchable. You know, I'll be squeezing you in. So, yeah, I'm sure my United fans are furious, but I don't care. And I'm sure Chelsea fans are furious. I care even less. So, 